Hello there, Scapers. My name is Xenovilius, and welcome to my ultimate Beastmaster Durzag guide. Beastmaster Durzag is the first raid boss out of the two currently in the game. And if you didn't know what these ultimate guides were about, as opposed to some of my other guides, the ultimate guide series is a series which aims to cover everything from A to Z of uh, bossing. And this specifically will cover everything you need to know, first of all, about raids and how they work, and uh, all the way up to the looting mechanics and how that works and everything in between. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the series. This will be suitable for people who are starting out raids as well as for people who've done a few kills and uh, they want to find out how all the mechanics work because you might not be sure even though you've done a few kills you might not be sure of everything. And I will be covering all the Beastmaster Dozag roles in this video except the base tanking role which I would not recommend for beginners. So I've got a different guide for that you can check that out in your own time. And here's the menu for this video. So I've got nine different sections you can click on it here or look in the description if you haven't got annotations on. And I hope you enjoy the video. Raids in RuneScape is a group encounter of up to 10 people and usually 10 people because it's much harder to do with less than 10 people and these 10 people had to be using the grouping system which I'll talk about later on and uh, the two bosses in raids both involve two pre-boss encounters followed by the boss encounters themselves. At Beastmaster this is a wave of mini well several waves of uh, monsters before the boss actually comes out and at Yakamaru this is called the puzzle where you have to kill multiple waves of jellies before you can uh, go through and start killing Yakamaru and for both bosses you can't come back in after you die however you can loot even if uh, you die as long as you do at least one damage on either Beastmaster or Yakamaru before you died. You can only loot each boss once every two days so 48 hours and this reset is at reset or 0000, 000, 000, 000 game time. The unique loot includes the mass cab ability codex which unlocks three cool abilities or four cool abilities the corruption shot and blast the onslaught ability and the storm shards and shatter ability which is a combination so four different abilities and of course the axo pieces for magic ranged and melee so 15 pieces in total and this is non-degradable tier 90 tank armor with two special effects that i'll talk about at the end the good thing about raids is that you're guaranteed an average of five mil per raid run of both bosses if you don't get any acto or codex if you get codex obviously it's much more than five mil if you get acto you will have you'll get much less money and this means it's a guaranteed 10 mil an hour in a given 30 minute full raid which is a reasonable time for a decent team. Fast teams will get it in about 20 minutes, slower teams will probably fail a few times so it will take a bit longer but on average it will take about 30 minutes to do your full raid. Since raids are the highest level group encounter in the game, maybe not the hardest, the hardest is probably Hard Med Viraga, but the second hardest group encounter in the game. Success hinges heavily on DPS, so it's going to be really really hard for you guys to find a team who will accept you for less than the below requirements. Technically there are no requirements as such to actually go in and enter raids or Mazcab, which is the planet on which raids take place but the following are needed to join teams so the usual stuff of 90 plus defense 96 summoning for pack yak 96 herb loaf for overloads preferably supreme overloads if you have them as well and 95 plus prayer for the turmoil and equivalent curses raids are only really done with magic or ranged especially if you're a beginner you do not want to be trying to use melee so you want either 99 magic or 99 ranged the cheapest option is probably a superior zuriel staff that is magic tier 88 or if you want to go with tier 90 then uh, ascensions are also cheap as well a high invention level is also very useful to get augmented armor and weapons if you want to figure out how to if you want to figure out which perks are the best to put on your armors and weapons then please check out my perk skip video which is a guide to the best perks in the game for pvm and skilling and uh, as well as slaying but it's especially relevant to this video because i talk about all the perks you need for a good bossing setup dreadnips are not required right now because they're they've been nerfed but this may change in the future so if you want to go and get dreadnips that's fine as well but it's not necessary because it doesn't do anything anymore except it does a bit of damage but oh well and finally it's also essential that you complete the world wakes so that you've unlocked death swiftness and sunshine these are very very key abilities for any high level pvm not just for raids so make sure you have those as well 
It is time to have a look at the gear you're going to be needing if you want to do raids. And the first thing I want to say is that you do not want to be meleeing like I mentioned earlier. Especially if you're a beginner or just mildly experienced. Because it is very risky especially at Beastmaster Durzag. At Yakamaru not so much but definitely at Beastmaster Durzag. And so I'm only going to consider the magic and range setups. So the magic setup is DPS orientated. The options on the left are the ones that you should prefer to the options on the right. And the options on the left are the highest DPS options. But all of them are decent alternatives. And of course if you can augment and perk something up it's much better than if you don't. So if you want to have a look at what the best perks are. Again I'll mention the best invention perks guide that I made. And the link to that will be in the description below. It's also good to bring inferior raids armor. The one you can buy with techie from the guy just outside the raids entrance. Because it doesn't degrade at raids at all. It doesn't even degrade even one bit. But if you use it outside of raids it will degrade to dust eventually. So you can use it at raids even though it's not a DPS gear. But you only need to actually own it and have it in the bank for your chance of that piece to be doubled. You don't need to be wearing it. And if you have any questions on the gear make sure to give me a shout in the comment section below. Hopefully there are quite a few options there for you to choose from. A quick word on the weapon. Tier 88 Superior Zero Staff is actually great value for money. The last time I checked it was quite cheap. It's almost as good as tier 90 uh, and it's much cheaper than any other alternative you can see on screen. So definitely go for it if you're struggling for money. Otherwise go for the Nox Staff or Dual Seismics or the Sliske Staff. But Zero Staff or Superior Zero Staff is a great, great option. And for the range setup the same things apply. So I prefer the higher DPS items over the less DPS items. But having said that anything on this list is viable. Quick note on the gloves. I do prefer the Nightmare Gauntlets, the new gloves over the Swift Gloves. But there are arguments to say that the Swift Gloves are better than the Nightmare Gauntlets at Beastmaster and Yakamaru. And again if you want to use the inferior Tempest gear then feel free because it doesn't degrade at all at raids. But your team may not like it because... Because as a DPS your role should be to maximize your DPS via your gear as well as your abilities. And the weapon is also key. I believe the cheapest option out of the ones I've shown you guys is dual ascensions. And luckily they are also tier 90 so that's good. The other option is to get decimation the new bow from bounty hunter tier 87. That may also be quite cheap but it's tier 87 so I still prefer ascensions over them. If you have a Noxbow, that's the best. Well, it's on par with Ascensions, but I prefer the Noxbow. Again, augmented versions and perked up versions are much more preferred to non-augmented and non-perked up versions. Now that you've had a look at the two different gear setups for Beastmaster Dozak, let's have a look at the inventory action bar and familiar. So first of all, the inventory. Most of the stuff in the inventory should be fairly obvious. The reason I'm bringing so many brews is because as a beginner, you want to bring more brews than later on later on you will reduce the number of brews you take but as a beginner you want to bring quite a few brews just because you don't know how much you'll be healing and of course brews have a higher amount of heals per slot you obviously want to bring runes if you're maging and a gothic staff with a spec as well if you're maging you definitely want a shield if you're ranging bring a shield bow because shield bows will allow you to, to use two-handed abilities whilst having the shield abilities but if you're maging you want a wand and a shield switch if you're pet tanking or just a shield switch for the occasional resonance uh, if you're not tanking anything excalibur for the heals ring a vigor switch for the ultimate adrenaline boost Replenishment Potion because it acts as a super restore as well as an Adren Pot. Weapon Poison works on quite a few monsters down there so you want to bring that as well. I bring Great Gunkin for the initial 1.5k heal as well as a bit of a heal later on as well. And Portent of Life as well. You don't need too many restores but it is useful to restore if you brew up a lot because your overloads won't restore your stats quickly enough unless you use these super restores. And my Yak is also fairly standard. You, again you can change it depending on what you wish. My action bar is also fairly standard and my main action bar just has a, has the three best basic abilities on the far left. I've got some thresholds on the right and I quick bound my food because that's really essential as well. If you want to spam eat you don't want to be clicking on the inventory. And my secondary action bar has a load of crap but <laughs> that's because I use it everywhere. A couple of things are really useful on your second reaction bar. First of all the Gothic Staff special so that you can switch effectively and spec effectively. I like to put my Vigor, my Planted Feet, Sunspear and Sunshine on there as well for that quick switch as well. 
shield and resonance on my action bar as well for the quick switch and my prayer switch is on my action bar as well again for the same reason and at the end of my primary action bar I've also got provoke and devotion which are absolutely essential especially if you're pet tanking and devotion whatever you're doing as a DPS as well right the time has come to talk about the grouping system and uh, this is a system that allows you to teleport directly there so you don't actually need to know how to get there as long as you use this system and also it's a system which you have to use in order to enter Yakamaru and Beastmaster so how do you access it first of all you go to F5 you press F5 go to grouping system if you're starting a team well either way this is how it works whether or not you're starting a team if you want to get invited by someone else then make sure you set re receive invites from whoever you want to get invites from make sure it's not on receive no invites that may be the reason you're not getting invites if people say I can't invite you also you need to uh, set it to liberation of mass cap uh, view selected and you can join the group if you haven't started a group already if you want to start your own group you can uh, start it like this and you can update the group to change it from your group to the liberation of mass cap now you want to turn off matchmaking matchmaking randomly puts people from the queue into your team you don't want to do that because you don't know these people you only want to invite your friends so you turn off matchmaking and you can also drag it out if you want um, like I have done over here I'm gonna invite uh, one of my friends uh, just to show you you either press that button you type in their name or you can just right click them in your friends list or in your clan chat or whatever and invite to group and that's how you invite people if you want to start a group and you click ready when you're ready uh, you need to be out of interfaces and then you'll be able to be teleported straight to the entrance to raids so my friend just ready up this is just an example we've only got two people we're not actually going to go into a fight but i'll show you how it works so ready up both of us uh, we complete the group which means we set ourselves as a group no one can join or leave us unless we leave this setting so we can either finalize or teleport teleporting is obviously the option you want to use but so it won't let you teleport unless you, you're actually not in any interfaces and you're not in combat either and here we are this is the entrance to Mazcab you can choose the boss like this um, Beastmaster or Yakamaru and uh, you can enter if, you, if you're the leader then the leader has to enter first before anyone else can otherwise you can just teleport here by yourself you don't actually need to invite anyone let's have a look at all the different monsters you'll be encountering in the Beastmaster Durzag fight and there are six of them guys most of them are harmless only two are really harmful I'd say Beastmaster and the Eretz the Eretz have a higher kill potential than Beastmaster so the first two are the Charges and the Eretz as you can see the Eretz can one hit you with their frenzy attack they can hit 4k plus with each one and well the Charges basically just charge you as you can see they're just hitting me with melee after barging me and the damage just stack up over time so you want to kill them off as quick as possible as for Eretz well you can see here my teammate is getting hit by the frenzy attack but fortunately he managed a devotion to avoid the damage and that's what you should be doing they can attack with either range or melee so you need to look out for that as well now Beastmaster Dozak has three different pets they're called Kormez, Kra and Terz respectively from left to right Kormez appears first as you will see and he's quite easy to kill but the other two can to hit you so you got to be very careful one of their special attacks is when they barge towards the dps pal and they and you'll get a message saying the beast bites into your flesh that means you'll receive increased damage one way to combat this is to resonance because they will melee you another way is to devotion with protect melee on which is a safer option because they barge and they run all over the place they will also attack the dps pal with their respective style when this happens as you saw that guy died unfortunately while the pet was jumping around so you got to be very careful about that as well the second pet spawns when Beastmaster Dozak says here boy as he saw there just as a reminder if you weren't paying attention and finally when you're pet tanking you will get a combust effect or the range equivalent of it when you are pet tanking so you want to use freedom when that happens and those are really the special attacks of the pets and last but certainly not least guys we have Beastmaster Dozak now this guy attacks with melee so it mainly only affects the base tank he's got 1.5 mil HP he's got massive defense and he can easily one hit you especially if you're the base tank but you don't have to worry about him for most of the fight except for the second half because his attacks only really affect the base tank so one of his attacks is the frenzy attack where he'll drag anyone close by in and smack them with melee you can devotion 
or surge away from this so usually you won't be affected by it only the backup base was affected there and the second attack is the bomb attack he'll throw a ton of bombs around this will happen after one of the pets is dead at least one of the pets is dead and all you got to do is click on the bombs to disable them otherwise they will explode for 2k and disable all the defensives and reset them so you got to be careful about that and then he will also throw some cages with some charges out which will start stunning you so you can also look out for that those two are the only real attacks he also throws some spines which you can protect from by protecting from ranged which is which should be your default prayer anyway but yeah now guys I'm going to explain step by step how the fight works using this map of the arena and north is up by the way. I'm going to label the monsters and the roles down below as you can see. So the first thing that's going to happen when you enter is uh, well you're going to start the fight and you will get three to four waves of aerates and charges from uh, each of the entrances you can see on the map. You, you have to clear these guys out and the Eretz are the most deadly monsters. You want to make sure you kill them off as fast as possible. And then Kormez will spawn from the West Gong. Uh, he has 500k HP. So you've got a pet tank tanking him and all the DPSs attacking him, getting him down as fast as possible. Because there are nine DPSs all on Kormez at the same time with ultimates, it will die off in about a minute. And then you will have three to four more waves of charges and Eretz for a total of 39 Eretz to kill and remember until this point apart from that Kormaz tank everyone who will have roles in the future is currently just a DPS. Now everything changes the moment Beastmaster spawns so pay attention here there are multiple roles taking place. As a newbie you wouldn't be asked to base Beastmaster but you will be asked to do any of the other roles possibly not pet tanking but definitely charges. So what happens is either Tuz or Kra spawns at the north gong alongside Beastmaster does the base tank will start voking off Beastmaster Durzag. What you want to do is make sure you get at least one damage on Beastmaster Durzag before you die, or if you die, because if you die without damaging Beastmaster Durzag, then you will not get the kill. So this is your chance to make sure you tag him. After that, uh, you can split off as you wish. The, f the pet tank will uh, tank either Kra or Tuz. It's random which one spawns. And uh, they will make sure it faces away from the DPS as you can see so that the DPS don't get hit. And finally there will be two, two people opening up the cages around the rooms. So there are 12 cages on the north side, 12 cages on the south side. And one person will open all the north cages. The other person will open all the south cages. And usually the person opening the south cages is also the backup base tank. Tank. Once all the cages are opened, then they will protect melee and go to the southwest corner alongside the 24 charges that they've opened up with them. So they'll use things like Corruption Blast, Corruption Shot, Detonate, Bombardment, aka wreck them to bits as fast as possible, whilst the DPSs will be attacking either Tuz or Kra, whichever one spawned first. Now once it gets to 150k, the DPSs should go on the other pet, whatever it may be, Tuz or Kra or Kra or Tuz and as soon as the second pet spawns which will be shortly after the first pet spawns the next pet tank should be tanking that pet and facing it away from the DPSs and the DPSs should be attacking the second pet after getting the first pet down to 150k HP. After both pets are at 150k HP the DPSs should focus on Beastmaster Durzag. The pet tanks will uh, do the remaining damage well hopefully they'll finish off the pets after that and the dpss will uh, get Beastmaster Durzag's HP down all the way to 750k at which point you will do massively reduced damage on Beastmaster until you kill the pets so at this point you want to kill off all the pets and this is when the backup base tank comes in because Beastmaster will go enraged and start wrecking the main base tank so the backup base tank will need to evoke periodically as soon as the pets are dead each pet dying will uh, increase his enrage massively so when both pets are dead he will go mental and once both pets are dead every Everyone will be focusing on Beastmaster Durzag. This is the point where you need to kill him off as fast as possible to mitigate the damage or reduce the damage taken by the base tanks as much as possible. He will do loads of special attacks and bomb throw out bombs and things like that, which I will go into detail in the next section. But uh, this is just basically how the whole fight works. And then you kill him off. 
and you can loot him as long as you did one damage to him. If he died and he couldn't get back in time, don't worry, you can loot from Fetcher outside. So yeah guys, that's basically the strategy, or well, the mechanics of how it works. I'm going to talk about the strategy on how to approach it now, with the uh, footage for all the different roles involved. Oh, and if you're wondering what happens to the roles that existed before and now have disappeared, any roles that have disappeared basically become DPSs after their job is done. So the pet tanks become DPSs, the charger openers, cage openers and charger killers become DPSs as well. And thankfully, Eretz won't spawn. As soon as Beastmaster spawns, Eretz won't spawn anymore, only charges. So uh, you're safe from those. Alright, so now that we've looked at all the special attacks and how the fight works, let's look at how you go about killing him in practice and look at a model kill from the perspective of all the roles except the base tank because that is covered in a different video. So, first of all, you want to get ready uh, and you want to go in. Make sure you got everything you need. And most importantly, make sure you have a portent of life because I'm telling you now, you're probably going to die to the Eretz before Beastmaster and that's not going to end well for anyone because you won't be able to loot Beastmaster if you die to Eretz because you need to do at least one damage to Beastmaster if you want to loot. And so you want to last at least as long as Beastmaster. Oh, that's assuming your team actually kills Beastmaster, even despite you dying. So, yeah. So you can start it by right-clicking on the Gooby in the middle, as long as everyone everyone in your team is in there. And then you will get uh, a few Gobies coming out. After that, you'll get Charges and Errors. So the most important thing, like I keep mentioning, is to make sure you kill off the Errors as fast as possible and be very vigilant. So protect from range by default. And if a uh, error goes frenzy on you, devotion. If the error is on melee, dis is at melee distance and attacking you, you should uh, protect from melee and devotion. Sometimes all of them can attack you, and all of them can frenzy at the same time. That's quite rare, but it has killed so many people, including myself. So you got to be very careful about that. I keep mentioning it because it is true. More people die to that than they do to the main bosses or pets I guess and I was pet tank one here so I had to vote Cormes from the west wall when he spawned and he doesn't really do much damage uh, he's got a special that will reduce a run energy or something um, as you can see but yeah everyone just deaths with the sun, sun shines and kills him off as fast as possible but uh, you also need to sort of prioritize the errors because there will be errors in the background while Cormes is alive and they can still kill people so you want to Make sure you kill them off. And then you have a few more waves of Eretz uh, to do before Beastmaster spawns. Now it's time for Beastmaster. So when the timer starts and the Eret count reaches zero, it's time for Beastmaster. Let's take a quick look at what's going on. So the base tank evokes Beastmaster first of all. Uh, the charges go to the eastern wall and start opening up all the cages. North and south, one for each side. And uh, there's a person taking the first pet alongside Beastmaster, which happens to be Tuz in this case. And uh, we, on the other hand, as DPSs, are taking a lot of damage from Tuz whilst we wait for the Tuz tank to evoke it. So uh, we should probably be praying um, Mage there, and Beastmaster just randomly comes and smacks one of my teammates. So uh, yeah, we're just killing Tuz now, as per the plan we followed earlier. And... Soon it will be the turn for Kra to spawn. You see that one bomb going off? Uh, all you, you got to do is click on it to defuse it safely. Now Kra comes to the scene and starts biting us. This means we will take increased damage and we'll take melee damage. And uh, I didn't devotion. I didn't protect melee. I should have done. But instead I did I did the uh, resonance a nice 1.97k hit. And told the pet tank to kindly evoke it because uh, it is always nice to be nice to your teammates. And now it is uh, just time to just keep DPSing, uh, having used my death swiftness. Did I use my death swiftness? I don't even remember. Anyway, I think I used my death swiftness, so I just DPS it down to 150k ish. And then we go on to crawl whilst looking out for the occasional barge by the two pets onto the DPS pile. And also, they will stun you if they barge through you to attack someone else. So be aware of that. You'll also see Beastmaster occasionally throw out the odd bomb as well and trap someone in a cage, which is 
perfectly harmless really and uh, yeah get the second pet down to 150k and uh, incidentally someone well the first pet tank accidentally killed the first pet uh, way before they were meant to they meant to kill it when beastmaster is at 750k so he starts going mad and throws out tons of bombs instead of just one bomb so that's one of the disadvantages of killing the pet too early so that's why you want to kill it at 750k and he also starts throwing out a ton of charges and cages which will really affect the base tank but that's not your problem so at this point you just want to avoid these attacks by spamming spam clicking on the bombs to make sure they don't explode in your face and kill you whilst also being aware that the pits may barge onto you and stun you and bite you which isn't very nice and uh, after the after Beastmaster is at some 50k HP you can kill off the two pets and start DPSing him and hopefully the base tanks do a good job of uh, not dying and tanking him and you yourself should also keep your HP high unlike me here that is also a key because the bombs when they defuse can kill uh, quite a few people as they killed my friend there as you can see and don't get too close to Beastmaster either um, because he can smack you with a melee hit and potentially KO you. So that is the kill done. Uh, it's fairly straightforward once you kill the two pets for you as a DPS but not so for the base tanks. Let's look at pet tanking in a bit more detail guys and the first thing you should know about pet tanking is that your pets will constantly jump on the DPS's. Well not constantly but they will have bouts where they jump a lot especially Tuz. So the way it seems to work is that Kra seems to attack the person who's doing the most DPS on Beastmaster, which usually is the backup base tank. Uh, as you can see, it just jumps right over there. And one thing you can do to avoid this happening is that you can make sure that Kra is behind the line of sight of Beastmaster. This may be hard to make to get uh, the pet into that position, but you can try at least, and the way you do this is by making it go behind the gong so that there is no straight line between it and the Beastmaster without having to run through a wall, which it can't do. Because the barge ability only works if you have a straight line between yourself and your target. So that's another way of doing it, making sure there is no straight line between the pet and the person doing the most damage, which is the backup base tank. Second of all, Tuz. Now, you don't want to get into this position at all, ever. Uh, you need to make sure that you're standing in a position where you can quickly work it back from the DPS, from attacking the DPSs, and you don't have to move too much. So this is an ideal position. For example, the northwest corner or the northeast corner is fine as well. You don't want to be too far away from the DPSs because then you'd have to run towards them in order to get Tus back if it jumps onto the DPS pile. Now, you should be fine with just a shield bow. Um, as a switch for reflect and possibly barricade and immortality but most of the time you you are expected to do 150k damage on the pet um, and make sure that it dies around the same time as Beastmaster reaches 750k HP so you might as well just camp your main weapon and use devotion and debilitate and hope Hopefully your enhanced devoted 3 perk actually procs as well to help you out a bit and uh, that should be fine but if you are struggling make sure you switch to your shield bow and you do need to have Voke all the time so make sure you have Voke ready and freedom if you get the combust because that can add up over time as well and finally let's look at what a charger tank does so they're possibly the easiest role you can do as a beginner and all you do is stand on one side of the eastern gong and start opening up the cages uh, going anti-clockwise or clockwise if you're starting from the north. You just need to make sure all the cages are opened as fast as possible and the cages will appear when Beastmaster spawns. You want to group up with your partner, usually in the southwest corner, and just wreck them with AoE abilities, especially Corruption Blast, Corruption Shot, uh, Bombardment and detonate as well as barrage spells if you have them and they should be cleared out fairly soon uh, protect melee uh, devotion if required and after you're done you can just go back to the dps pile it's important that you do this promptly because if you take too long uh, the charges will, will release onto the nearby players and uh, they will start dealing damage to them now the looting system at raids is fairly complicated which is to be expected for such a complicated boss but um, 
Essentially, the chance of getting a mass capability codex is 1 in 20. I believe that's the same for Beastmaster and Yakamaru. Uh, the chance of getting Acto is around 1 in 40 at Yaka and around 1 in 80 at Beastmaster, which means if you have any reroll tokens from the quest, uh, the Gobi quest, then it's best to use them at Yakamaru for the increased Acto chance. You also double your chance even more if you own the inferior piece, uh, inferior actor piece for the piece that you're, well, on par to get. And you can buy these with the techie you get from killing Beastmaster and Yakamaru. So the order in which you get these actor pieces, um, it depends on which boss you're killing. If you're killing only Beastmaster, you'll only get boots until you get all three boots. And then you'll start getting gloves and then helms and then legs and then bodies. So you'll, like, you'll get all three styles of each piece first before getting all three styles of the next piece and so on um, and that's the way it works and as far as Yaka is concerned you'll get all three style gloves first and then boots and then helm and then body so it's slightly different for Yakamaru. Now the first item, the first actor piece you'll ever get will be of the style you used to deal the most damage. So for example, my friend a Wildman18 Do uh, did his first, well I think it was his second ever raid kill. He did it with Mage and he got to the primeval boots first from Beastmaster. So that's what you can expect uh, for your first ever piece. Not sure. I don't think it will work for the remaining pieces, but definitely for the first piece. And if you have run out of reroll tokens from the quest, the way you can gain you can gain a free reroll is to maximize your reputation in mass cap. There are several activities which do this. I'm not going to go into the details of it, but one of the major ones is by burying the Gobi burial charms you get from raids as loot uh, you might have them in your bank right now and you probably haven't noticed maybe but yeah you can bury them for a big chunk of uh, reputation and there are some daily activities of course as well which will help you progress towards th that goal once you get 5k you will have one free reroll shared between beastmaster and yakamaru so three possible chances at acto and mathematically the best chance is when you use your reroll token at yakamaru so you kill Beastmaster, you don't actually loot Beastmaster, you go to Yakamaru, uh, you kill Yakamaru, you loot Yakamaru, you re-roll if it isn't an Acto piece, and then you loot Beastmaster. And that is the best chance of Acto mathematically. But obviously you stand the risk of, well, if you die at Yaka and by the time you get back there's no one in the kill, then you can't actually go to the Yaka corpse, so you'll have to go to Fetcher. And Fetcher won't hold both Beastmaster and Yaka loot at the same time, so you will only get the Yaka Maru loot from Fetcher. So that's a risk you carry, but I think it's worth the risk if you have 5k reputation. This only applies really if you don't want the little tuzzy pet because obviously if you want that you want to reroll Beastmaster and the chance of that is 1 in 512 flat. Thank you so much for watching so far guys, really do appreciate it and I just want to finish off by giving you guys a few tips and tricks from my own personal experience, not from anything else, not from looking on the internet or anything but just from what I've done, what I've learnt and the mistakes I've made. So from uh, 5 to 1, with 5 being the least of my least important of my top 5 tips, uh, let's start with awareness and confidence in what you're doing and what your, your teammates are doing. Because being aware is so important in giving you confidence. I've seen so many people sort of not respond to calls about, oh, do you know what you're doing? Do you know how to do this? Have you had experience doing it? I mean, just be honest with your teammates. That makes so much difference. Trust me. Being honest makes so much more of a difference than thinking, oh, I'm just going to embarrass myself if I admit that I have never done this before. So I'll just wing it and see what happens. No, that doesn't work. So you need to make sure you read up or watch guides like this one and that will build your confidence. Of course, doing it will build your confidence even more. Number four is anticipation of a pierced shaped situation and taking the initiative that comes with awareness i'd say so for example if the backup base dies go and back up base if the main base tank guy dies go and invoke and be the main base tank stop it from getting onto your dps teammates and killing them and ruining the kill if the pet tanks forgets go and pet tank while they remember if the cages near the base open up and they're all all the charges are on the base go and drop a corruption shot on them or vote them off and things like that so 
Number three is mental resilience and learning from mistakes. It's very easy to die at Beastmaster because there's so many things going on. I'd say there's so many more unpredictable things going on at Beastmaster compared to Yakamaru. So you need to be mentally strong. If you die, it's not. It's no big deal. Just make sure you don't die before Beastmaster spawns because that's criminal. That's just unforgivable. And I'm guilty of that as well. So just be careful not to die to errors, guys. Develop good DPS rotations. That's also very important. Not so much for Beastmaster, but for Yakamaru, I'd say. And finally, have good communication. You don't necessarily need Discord or TeamSpeak or things like that for Beastmaster. It's a fairly straightforward boss, but um, it's good to communicate with each other via the French chat or the group chat or public chat. Especially let your teammates know when you die, because if you were roll and you died, it's really annoying as people in the kill trying to figure out who the hell died and whether they need replacing in terms of a role. So make sure you call that out. I know it can be quite difficult to get into raids, but Beastmaster is quite easy to get into. I'd say a few FCs are very good for that. Even the grouping system works for Beastmaster. But if you want to get into raids properly, then you definitely need to join a good PVM clan. There's no way around that. Or a good FC and get a high rank in it. I'll list some in the description below. But um, yeah, that's all I have to say for this video. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, please post down below. Uh, it took me absolutely ages to make this video, so a like would be much much appreciated guys and subscribe if you want to see more and uh, yeah i'll see you in the next one hopefully a yakamaru guide next week